The following episode of the 8pm quiz may contain strong language, adult themes, and very bad jokes. Please approach it with care. Well, good evening. Welcome. We are streaming live once more from the Blue Mountains in front of the uh, green screen of blurry, out of focus whiskey bottles on a shelf uh, taken from uh, some stock photography. I'm still Gary and this is the 8pm Quiz of Everything 2022 and uh, let me just admit uh, that I've stole the kind of naming convention um, of, of this quiz. Uh, Channel 4 in the UK have a big quiz at the end of each year called the Big Fat Quiz of, insert year name here, and uh, then they do one the following week, the Big Fat Quiz of Everything, um, just not just the previous year as another holiday thing. So I've basically stolen that. Last week we had the big fat quiz of, no, not the big fat one, the 8 p.m. quiz of the year 2021. That was fun. That was last week. This is the 8 p.m. quiz of everything 2022. Not all the questions are about uh, things that happened in 2022, though. Uh, there's not been a lot of 2022 so far. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll continue on. If you haven't joined us before, this is basically like a, a pub style quiz. In the next hour and a bit, I'll be asking you 40 questions. They are divided uh, cunningly into part one and part two of 20 questions each. Uh, we will go through the questions. I will read them to you. I'll also show you some pictures. Uh, you will write down the answers and you will be trusted uh, at the halfway point and at the end to score, mark, grade uh, and otherwise judge your answers and add up your scores. Uh, who have we got here this week? We've got oh, 13, 13 streams up and running. Hi Ross, hi me and mine, hi Peter McCrudden, uh, hi Miss Cat, uh, Bren, hi Bren, good to see you here, Mr Avocado, Mr Campbell. Uh, who else? Uh, well that's, that's all that are admitting their presence uh, here at the moment. You don't have to uh, join the chat, you can just play or, or you can just Watch me with the sound turned off if that's if that's your thing. I don't mind. Um, just some housekeeping before uh, we get underway. One is that also tonight, uh, not that one, that one, the 9 p.m. Summer Series 2022 crowdfunding campaign uh, has uh, 54 minutes left to run. That finishes at 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. If you haven't looked at that yet, I would be most grateful if you did, uh, and even more grateful if you uh, pledged your support. We've already gone past target two. That means there will be six special guest episodes of the 9pm Edict podcast uh, in January and February. Uh, I've started lining up guests. I'll tell you more about that uh, a bit later. Uh, but have a look at that, and uh, I will uh, report on how that goes as we go along. Um, and also, oh, hi, Coralie, hi, and Garth Kidd, and Mick Fong. Hello, Mick Fong, all the way from the other side of the, the nation. Uh, where is it raining? Is it on fire? Is it both? I can never tell. Um, what else do I need to tell you before we start? Oh, the game mechanics. Um, there can be a delay of up to a minute between when I speak and you see it on the stream and then you react in the chat and then I see it and then react to your reaction and so on. Uh, so I will uh, usually be a little slow in, in responding to things. Hello, Cheese Trumpet. Um, good for you to join us. Um, I'm trying to work out the logistics of how a Cheese Trumpet would work. It sounds, I mean, it sounds impractical, doesn't it, to be perfectly honest, but you know, who am I to judge? Um, so I will be looking at the chat, as I say, but I'll be a bit slow to respond. Uh, 40 questions, 20 then 20. And, and like, don't cheat. Don't put answers in the chat unless they are both wrong and funny. Don't forget the funny bit. Um, and yeah, don't cheat. You're only cheating yourselves. Now, right, fire and rain resistant over in Mr. Fong's territory. Excellent. Oh, spillage already. Excuse me, I don't... When you've got the big ice cube, don't stir it around. Um, bit of a thing. Okay, get your pens and papers and 
notepads and writing implements, crayons, in some people's eyes, high Oberon's ghost. Uh, and uh, let's, let's get some questions going. Here we go. Round one, or part one rather, round one is the new news round. Five questions about current events. Kim Kardashian has unfollowed Miley Cyrus on Instagram after she, that is Ms Cyrus, hosted a New Year's Eve party with Pete Davidson, who is apparently an American television comedian. Now, this move could signal some three-way drama among Kardashian, Cyrus and Davidson after, after that New Year's Eve party in Miami. So in what year was Instagram launched? In what year was Instagram launched? That's question one. Question two, uh, this woman is Stephanie Matto. Stephanie Matto. Why was she in the news this week? I've written down two points for some reason for this. That's not true. It's only one point. But Stephanie Matto, that woman there, was in the news this week. Why was she in the news? You will either know this or you will not know this. Obviously, that's how quizzes work. Uh, but but the, 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 key words, the key words are, the, are, are, are there. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Campbell. I know I'm an asshole, but number one, what year was Instagram launched? Question two, uh, tell me about this woman here. Why is she in the news? Question three is our first picture question. Who are these three people? A point each. They're all in the news this week. I want their names. I'll leave that on the screen for a moment. On, on the left, that's possibly... Oh, no, look, I won't. I, I won't speculate. Hi, KA. Waves to you too. Good to see you there. Um, good to see some regulars on and some new people. I have just seen that... Uh, oh. Thank you to another person pledging in. Uh, what's my calculation? Three, six, nine. Oh, I'm just I'm just calculating the the possible thing. That's just clocked over eighty percent of the way to uh, target three, which is fantastic. I think you've seen those people uh, for enough time. So question four. 20 acts at least have boycotted this year's Sydney Festival, which starts today or is scheduled to start today sydney festival why have more than 20 acts boycotted the sydney festival and indeed a lot of people are uh, returning their tickets and so on what has caused this boycott of the sydney festival i mean apart from the usual uh, things you might do and question five spencer eldon He's 30 years old. He had his legal case thrown out of court this week. Uh, he was suing members of a band and their heirs in some cases, claiming that their actions had caused him, quote, extreme and permanent emotional distress, plus loss of wages and enjoyment of life. Why? What did they do to him? What did these people do to Spencer Eldon that he was suing them for all of those things? That is question five. Round two is always three questions on a subject of my choice. Now today, the 6th of January, is National Bean Day in the United States for, for some reason. So here are three questions about beans. Question six. National Bean Day commemorates the death of a 19th century meteorologist, mathematician, biologist, Augustinian friar, and abbot of St. Thomas's Abbey in Brno, Moravia. Uh, his experiments with breeding pea plants, you see, form the basis of modern genetics. What is this person's name? Well, I can say man, we know it's a bloke. What is this man's name? He was a meteorologist, a mathematician, a biologist, and his breeding of pea plants formed the basis 
of modern genetics. You are late, Jono, abroad. Uh, if you're very good, I will run through the questions very, very fast for you in a minute, once we've had these questions about beans. Question six, who was the meteorologist, mathematician, biologist, friar and abbot uh, from Moravia, from Brno, uh, who's, who bred pea plants and formed the basis of modern genetics? That's question six. Question seven, the traditional Japanese seasoning miso is produced by fermenting which kind of beans? I reckon that one's piss easy. What kind of beans do you ferment if you are making miso? Journal Abroad, I hope you're paying notice. Uh, question one, I won't go through the preamble, but what year it was Instagram launched? Question two, uh, this woman, Stephanie Matto, is in the news this week. Why is she in the news? Question three is the picture question, who are these people? One point each. I will leave that on the screen for a little while. Question four. Why have more than 40 acts boycotted this year's Sydney Festival? And question five. 30-year-old Spencer Eldon had his legal case thrown out of court this week. He was suing members of a band and their heirs because some of them might be dead. He claimed their actions had caused him extreme and permanent emotional distress, loss of wages and enjoyment of life. Why? What, what did these people do to Spencer Eldon that he sued them for those things? Back to the bean question. Question eight. Eight. I don't know why I'm sounding like that. Question eight. Beans means Heinz. I mean, that's a slogan we probably all remember. But where was Heinz founded, the Heinz Company? Was it Sharpsburg, Pennsylvania, Bourneville, which is near Birmingham in the UK, or Birmingham, Alabama? Where was the Heinz Company founded? Sharpsburg, Pennsylvania, Bourneville near Birmingham in the UK, or Birmingham, Alabama. And a bonus point, well, a point that'll count in. Another point, which decade was the Heinz Company founded in? Which decade? Uh, and, and we'll use the, the sort of thing that uh, we'll go by the, the second last digit. So 1990 to 1999 is the 1990s. Uh, but I think you'll agree the Heinz Company is older than the 1990s. So question eight, which of those three places was the, the, the place that Heinz started, Sharpsville, Pennsylvania, Bourneville, New Birmingham in the UK, or Birmingham, Alabama? That is question eight. Hi, Chrissy M, you like food questions, excellent. We've finished the food question now and we're going on to round three, which is five questions about the media using the broadest possible definition of the term media, the arts, entertainment, sport, all of all of those pastimes uh, are the media in the 8 p.m. quiz. Question nine. All of these TV shows were created by the same big production company. I want the name of the production company and the country where it's based, Deal or No Deal, Big Brother, Fear Factor, Peaky Blinders, and uh, the UK version of Black Mirror, and Jerseylicious. Which TV production company, quite a big one, is responsible for all of those, uh, all of those shows, uh, and, and what country is it based in? Deal or No Deal, Big Brother, Fear Factor, Peaky Blinders, uh, Black Mirror, brackets the UK version, because as we know, the American version is made by Netflix. This is not about Netflix. Uh, and Jerseylicious, which I personally hadn't heard of before writing this question, but I, I hope it's about cows. Okay, there's two points available to you there. The name of the company and the country it is from. Question 10, Australian sports bloke Daniel Sanders, Daniel Sanders is competing in what world-renowned event? And in what country is that event held? Daniel Sanders, he's Australian, 
He's not doing fabulously in it at the moment, I will, I will say, but he is competing in it. Uh, in this event, you will have heard of the event, I'm sure. What country is the event in? We also won. So there's two points available there. Uh, whoever GA is, uh, you, please read the pinned tweet. Uh, Mick Vong, Mick Fong asked whether it was Sharpsville or Sharps thing. Let me scroll back. Sharpsburg, Pennsylvania. Sharpsville is in another state, not Pennsylvania, I think, isn't it? Anyway, Sharps, Sharpsburg, Pennsylvania. I may have mispronounced that uh, there. Okay. Where are we up to? Oh, we've done question nine and we've done question 10. Question 11, the copyright problem avoiding... Um, uh, yeah, sorry, GA, yes, you're writing down the answers and we're scoring them at half time and at the end. So there you go. But that's all right. Good to have you here. Good to see someone new playing. Hope you have some fun. Question 10, song lyrics. I can't play you a tune and say name that tune. I, because of copyright, viciousness on behalf of YouTube, uh, but I can read you the lyrics to a song. So this song is from 2020. You get a point for the title and a point for the artist. What is this song? White shirt now red, my bloody nose. Sleeping, you're on your tippy toes. Creeping around like no one knows. Think you're so criminal. Bruises on both my knees for you. Don't say thank you or please. I do what I want when I'm wanting to. My soul, so cynical. Point for the artist, point for the title. It's from 2020. I was about to say 1920. I'm feeling that. Question 12. Question 12, it's an actor question. Actor covers all genders. Uh, so this, this could, be, could be anyone. But this actor has starred in all of these films in alphabetical order. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, Passion Play, Think Like a Dog, Transformers, and Zeroville. I'll read those again. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, Passion Play, Think Like a Dog, Transformers, and Zeroville, there is an actor who has performed in all those movies. While you're thinking about that, uh, let's throw up question 13, which is another picture question. Who are these three people? I do love that photo on the right. Bren, love a Jersey caramel. What is a, uh, oh, is, it about, is this still about cows? Anyway, here we here we go. Who are these? Who are these three women? I, I hope I didn't give too much away by saying that they're women, but they are indeed uh, all women in the media in some sense. Do you need more time with that? I'll leave it on the screen while I go across uh, to the next round, which will be five questions about old news. That is things. From the past. When is the Hull round, asked John Avocado. I, sadly, there is not a round specifically about Hull. Terribly sorry. Okay, those three, quest, those three women on screen constitute uh, question 13. Question 14, who was the second Prime Minister of Australia? Who was the second Prime Minister of Australia? I mean, and, and for a bonus point, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Um, oh, dear. Who was the second Prime Minister of Australia? That is question 14. Question 15 concerns the luxury design house Hermes. Hermes, I'm going to pronounce that that way. Which city was it founded in? And in which decade? Same rules for decade before, 
The design house Hermes, they make luxury goods of various kinds. Uh, which city and in which decade? And for another point, Hermes is a Greek god who is the Roman equivalent. So Hermes is founded in which city, in which decade, and what's the Roman equivalent of Hermes? Uh, that was question 15. Question 16, which was the first commercial airline to offer a round-the-world ticket? Yeah, one about aviation history there for you. The key things are a ticket that was sold as an around-the-world ticket, as a, as a single thing, as a single thing. Which commercial airline did that? So really your questions there, you, you, your clues there, I suppose it's got to be probably a major airline, probably one that was quite big at the time. Big network. Which airline was first though to actually market a ticket as around the world? So that's 16. Question 17. On this day in 1907, someone opened their first school and daycare centre for working class children in Rome, in Italy, not any of the other Romes. Who was it? What was their name? What was the name of the person who on this day in 1907 opened their first school and daycare centre for working class children. You will have heard of the name. It's not Walt Disney. Walt Disney <laughs> did not open a daycare centre and school in Rome. But someone did on this day in 1907. Question 18 is... The old news picture question. And we're looking at some old news here. Point each for these people. Names, please. There's some good clues on screen if you look closely. Who are these three people? And I, I'll give you a big hint. The, the person on the left is not the late Sir Terry Pratchett. KA's right, it's got to be Tiger Airlines or Scoot. Maybe it's Scoot. That's something to consider. Is it Scoot or is it Daft Punk? Oh, I assume that's for the airline question. Or is that for the second Prime Minister of Australia? Anyway, this is question 18. I just realised I could put the question numbers on the screen too to make it easier for people. I mean, not now because I've done all the graphics. Uh, well, you know, thing. Anyway, who are those three people? The one on the left, I reckon you should know. The one in the middle, yeah, probably. The one on the right, I will admit, is tricky. <laughs> Ryanair. John Avocado suggests it's Ryanair. You have to go around the world before you get to where you're going to. That 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 is a true that is a true thing. Yes, KA, there is an airline called Scoot. There you go. Okay, so that's a question 18. Now question 19 is traditionally, uh, and I'm sticking with this, the critter question, uh, which is about a critter. And here is this episode's critter. What is that? What is that? A bird, you say. Correct. But what kind of bird is that? I'll give you a clue. It's an Australian bird. How's that? That'll be something for you to consider. An Australian bird. I reckon... <laughs> 
Of course, the most famous Australian bird is Denise Drysdale, but that's another whole thing, isn't it? Sorry, people. Uh, that That is question 19. And question 20 is traditionally a who am I? So who am I? I was born on the 17th of January 1922 in Oak Park, Illinois, but my family moved to Alhambra, California the next year in 1923 uh, and then later to Los Angeles during the Great Depression. I wrote and played the lead in a graduation play at Horace Mann School and I discovered an interest in performing. Uh, I was inspired by my idols Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy and decided to pursue a career in acting. Uh, during the war, I, I kind of did driving and also entertained the troops. Uh, that's in World War II. And after the war, I decided to go around the movie studios looking for work. I was turned down because I was, quote, not photogenic. So I started to look for radio jobs as well. And uh, my first radio jobs included reading commercials and playing bit parts, uh, even doing crowd noises and so on. Eventually, uh, I did get into television, though. Uh, in the 1950s, I hosted and produced uh, a daily talk and variety show on NBC, but in a career spanning many decades. In fact, at one point had the Guinness Book of Records entry for the person who had the longest ever career in television. Uh, one of my most famous roles was as one of four older people living in Miami. Who am I? Born 1922, did a bit of driving and entertaining during World War II, uh, got interested in acting, but worked in radio first, had my own talk show, worked in, worked in, as, in acting for years, years and years and years and years, very famous, and was one of four people retired living in Miami in a sitcom on, on the television. Who am I? Right. Let's have a look how the uh, possible's going. Uh, it's sitting, sitting there as it was before. That is lovely. I'll give it another push. There's 30 minutes to go for that uh, in a minute. Let's go back and mark these questions, okay? Ready to add up your scores. Be honest. All of those things. Question one. Instagram was launched in 2010. Coming up to 12 years old. 2010 is the answer there. Question two. This is Stephanie Matto. Why is she in the news? Well, the main reason, of course, is that she was making £38,000 a week selling jars of her farts at about $1,000 each. Uh, she has 260,000 followers uh, on, on her social media outlet, and she was selling her farts in a jar for a thousand bucks each, so that's that's kind of what a heap of them. But the she was also in the news this week, and you'll get a point for this if you didn't say farts in a jar. Um, you uh, she she was rushed to hospital because her diet uh, included so much uh, uh, gas generating stuff. And here's a picture of her uh, showing off her farts in a jar um, that that she got. As you might imagine, a terrible, terrible gas problem. Uh, so, look, I think the key words are the farts, jars, uh, or hospitalised from from a thing. But now, uh, yes, you've you've guessed it. She's she switched to uh, selling NFTs of of pictures of farts in a jar, little cartoon farts in jars. There was a point available there. Uh, three points available in this question. Uh, from left to right, a point each for Karen Andrews, who's Australia's Minister for Home Affairs, who, of course, uh, uh, in the news today because of her interest in tennis. In the middle, that's a Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, uh, uh, continuing uh, in the news this week um, for... Um, 
well, those allegations. And on the right, that's the Northern Territory Chief Minister, Michael Gunner. A point for the name, Michael Gunner. I'll give you half a point for the Chief Minister of the Northern Territory if you couldn't remember his name. Ms Cat wants multiple points for farting in jars and hospital. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? Why not, Ms Cat? If you, if you know the full story, I reckon that's worth two points and a double extra fart. Okay. No, Ross, that was not the photo of her doing the rounds. I'm, I'm not going to be that silly. Question four. Uh, the acts are boycotting um, the Sydney Festival because of their sponsorship from the Israeli embassy. Um, uh, to stage a dance performer by an Israeli choreographer. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of pushback uh, because, of course, uh, Israel's position on Palestine, uh, which amounts to crimes against humanity, let's be honest here. Uh, so uh, uh, protest against uh, fin financing from Israel, only $20,000, which seems a bit small to become a major sponsor of the festival, but there you go. Um, I, th I think one problem with this boycott, though, we will miss out on a theatre production titled Seven Methods of Killing Kylie Jenner. Um, the world will not be the same. Anyway, uh, Israel is effectively the answer there. Part of that sort of thing. Question five. Spencer Eldon was uh, suing... The band Nirvana, and the, uh, because he's the, the, the little boy who's floating in the swimming pool on the cover of the album Nevermind. Uh, he is uh, suing them. So Nirvana's Nevermind cover photo, uh, 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 Penis Baby will do. I mean, you, you knew it or you didn't. Um, the judge threw that out saying, well, you know, this extreme and permanent emotion. Well, he threw it out first because he was claiming it was child pornography and the judge sort of went, no, it's just, it's just a picture of a baby. And uh, if this caused you so much permanent emotional distress, uh, why have you um, kind of recreated the photo uh, in, in your own photo shoots and made money from it. Anyway, uh, that is going back to to, uh, to court, I think, at the end of this month, so that may not be over yet. Nirvana's Nevermind album cover is your point for five. OK, Beans, Beans, question six. Gregor Mendel uh, was was the, uh, uh, the person who created modern genetics with pea plants. That's him there. I like the fact that he was also a mathematician and a meteorologist and, and, a, and a friar and an abbot and all of those things. But Gregor Mendel uh, is the answer you were after for the point. Question seven. Miso is made from fermented soybeans for the point. Also with salt, uh, koji, which is the fungus Aspergillus orizae. Uh, and sometimes with rice, barley, seaweed, other ingredients, 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 ingredients. Uh, but soybeans uh, for the point, uh, for seven. Uh, question eight. Beans means Heinz for the points. Heinz was founded in Sharpsburg, Pennsylvania for the point, which decade the 1860s for another point, 1869 to be precise. Uh, if you're wondering, Bourneville near Birmingham in the UK, uh, that was Cadbury's, uh, which was founded in 1824, the chocolate manufacturer. Uh, and Bourneville, some of their, well, that's their Bourneville cocoa was made in Bourneville, you see, that's good. Anyway, um, um, uh, uh, here's some trivia. In Heinz, in 2015, merged with Kraft Foods to form Kraft Heinz. That's now the fifth largest food company in the world. So it was a point for Sharpsburg and a point for the 1860s. Uh, the media rounds, uh, yes, you did get this in the chat, but that's all right. I think many of you knew it already. Uh, the TV shows were all created by Endemol, uh, which is a Dutch company. So there's the two points, Endemol and the Netherlands or Holland or however you want to call it. Uh, and Endemol comes from the name of the, the two founders who each were TV producers and they joined forces. Joop van der Ender and John de Mol. Ender and Mol, Ender Mol, very clever. Ender Mol and the Netherlands. Question 10, Daniel Sanders is competing in the Dakar rally for a point. And you might think that it is uh, held in 
uh, uh, northern Af parts of Africa. But no, since 2020, because of uh, uh, problems with, uh, well, the risk of, of motorcyclists running through the Sahara, uh, particularly through Mauritius and some other places, since 2020, the race is held in Saudi Arabia. So a point each for Dakar Rally and Saudi Arabia. It's all right, GA, don't worry. You're all good. <laughs> no one takes it that seriously. Anyway, Dakar Rally inside it. Question 11, the song lyrics. The song is called Bad Guy and the artist is Billie Eilish. So a point each for them. A point each for Bad Guy and Billie Eilish. Eilish, sorry. Question 12, the actor in all those films is Megan Fox. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, Passion Play, Think Like a Dog, Transformers, and Zero Phil. A point for Megan Fox. Uh, what? No, no, no. <laughs> we, got, we got more to come, G.A. None of the 20 questions in a minute. Okay, the old... Oh, hang on. Picture question 13. Question 13. Picture 13. From left to right, they are Amber Heard who's uh, named her new dog Barnaby, after Barnaby Joyce. Miley Cyrus in the middle, as previously mentioned, has been unfollowed by Kim Kardashian on, on Instagram. Terrible business. Uh, and that on the right is Helena Bonham Carter. John Avocado is saying bad guy wasn't from 2020. I am terribly sorry. It. Um, I looked at charts from 2020 so was it from 2019 i'm terribly sorry john avocado gets an extra point for picking that up um what do we so point each is amber heard miley cyrus and helena bonham carter question 14 uh the second prime minister of australia was alfred deacon Deacon, 1903 to 1904. Did anyone get that? They're both Miley Cyrus, you reckon? We're pretty much. In a sense, aren't we all Miley Cyrus? Uh, the design house Hermes was founded in Paris for the point. Paris for one point. And in which decade? The 1830s for a point. Hermes was founded in 1837 by Thierry Hermes. Uh, and the extra point, what's the Roman equivalent to the Greek god Hermes? The answer is Mercury. Mercury. Okay, Paris, 1830s, Mercury, three points available there. Question 16, the first commercial airline to offer around the world uh, ticket, Pan American Airlines, Pan Am. Not to be confused with the drag queen, Pam Ann. Uh, did she, she's still performing? Did a lovely line in, in, in kind of, you know, airline stewardess humour. Um, okay, so Pan American Airlines, no longer with us, of course. Um, question 17. The person who opened the school was Maria Montessori. A point for Montessori. You've heard of Montessori schools, haven't you? Well, that's that's it. Maria Montessori. Ah. 1907. There you go. Uh, question 18 is another picture question. On the left, a point each for these. That is Charles Darwin of uh, The Origin of Species fame. In the middle, that is Werner von Braun, the a rocket scientist and, and NASA uh, smart guy and and Nazi, and on the right, this I'll be surprised if anyone got this one. That is Carolyn Herschel, the astronomer. She is the brother of no, she's the sister of Sir William Herschel. They both born in Germany, but but lived in the UK. Sir William Herschel was, of course. Um, 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 I mean, told Pam Ann is not a drag queen. Oh, there you go. Performer. 
That style, anyway. Uh, anyway, that is Carolyn Herschel. She did a lot of the calculations for William. Uh, he did a lot of the observations, but she was the first woman to discover a comet. She observed a number of nebulae uh, and so on. Uh, so she uh, deserve, uh, deserves um, um, credit as an astronomer in her own right. So a point each for Charles Darwin, Werner von Braun and Carolyn Herschel. On to the critter. And the critter is a wonga pigeon, W-O-N-G-A. I'm not checking his spelling. A wonga pigeon, uh, Leucosarchia melanoleuca. A wonga pigeon. They, this one looks quite a, a deal less spherical than many of them do. Um, timid little birds. I had one nibbling at my doorstep the other day, so to speak. And question 20, who am I? Actor Betty White, full name Elizabeth Marion White Ludden, uh, who died, unfortunately, the other day, just a couple of weeks short of her 100th birthday. Uh, an amazing thing when you look her up. Uh, she was the first woman to produce a sitcom, which was called Life with Elizabeth, uh, at least in the US, first woman to produce that. Uh, she was then, in 1955, named an honorary mayor of Hollywood, uh, often called the first lady of television, starred in everything from The Bold and the Beautiful to Boston, uh, Boston Legal, Hollywood Squares, of course, uh, Match Game, other, other game show uh, things, etc., etc., etc. So, by my calculations, the, well, we started with a possible 31 points in the first half. What have you got out of 31? I will say, for those of you who are new, getting half like getting 50% is, is considered really good in this quiz. So there were 31 points available plus a few more, whatever. We call it 31 points uh, is the nominal uh, thing for part one. Uh, just a reminder, we've got about 15 minutes left in the 9pm Summer Series 2021 uh, possible campaign. I'm, just, uh, I'm just, checking the, just checking the thing down here. Um... Oh, up to 3740, which is... Do, 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 uh, equals 81% of target three. If we can get to target three, that will be fabulous. Uh, if we if we get a proportionate there, I'll, I'll kind of throw in an extra episode. Uh, but we have got uh, six special guest episodes locked in. There will be one. Uh, Upali Divisekra and Dr. Trent Yarwood will be joining us again to talk about the joys of medical research. Um, I suspect a pandemic may uh, come up in that. There will be the episode on submarines that I've uh, had trouble uh, getting people for. No one wants to talk about submarines because they're so secret squirrel. Can I push the time back? No, I can't. That's the thing. I can't change it. Once it's done, that's the game for those uh, cam campaigns. Now, um, that's on screen. Let me just look at some of your scores here. Oberon's Ghost got 17. Big Fong, 8. Some non-entertainment questions now. Absolutely, there will be non-entertainment. Mad Arkle, 8. 8 was brutal. Oh, 8. Two. Jono Abroad, 17? Wow. 17 out of what that is that is awesome we will we will that that's fabulous my god i'm i'm not shocked i'm not surprised that john abroad's done well i I'm, I'm surprised that anyone got 17 there you go uh long drinks break no 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 you can you can do this you can you can do this what i'll do what I'll do is, is that that link there stops taking pledges at 9 p.m. But what I'll do, the regular tip address, I'll basically count any further tips that come in in the next 24 hours towards that total, just for latecomers. How about that? I'll do it that way. I mean, the money will basically come through past this point anyway, so it doesn't really matter how it comes through. Okay. Chrissy got 14. Very good. Very good there. Okay. Are we all ready to rock and roll for part two? I hope you are because I'm going to press that button and then press that button. 
because it's the platypus round. Yes, snarky platypus on Twitter uh, has sent through uh, four questions. Uh, they are, of course, on uh, topics of interest to, uh, to him. They're often quite tough. Uh, now, what am I, what am I drinking? Yeah, you, let's let's have a bit of a thing. That uh, no, I'll, hold, I'll I'll do the drinking thing in a minute. Um, now, on Twitter this afternoon, I did say, "quote I've received four questions from Snarky Platypus for the Platypus Round, and they're quite fun. I hope you know your Dutch history." Now, as it happens, um, those two statements are completely unrelated. I I just think it would be good generally if people knew their Dutch history. Um, these, these uh, questions all, all have a certain theme. I, I don't know whether this means someone was being a bit lazy writing the questions or, or was inspired. But question 21, come on. Question 21, how many living species of echidnas exist? You know, echidnas, they're like, they're like platypuses, except they're even bigger pricks. ha, 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 ha. Oh, I, I forgot to say, um, I haven't put the credit up. Uh, this, this platypus swimming around in the video is at uh, San Diego Zoo for some reason. Uh, they just happened to publish it um, for anyone to do. It loops after three minutes, so it's not all that exciting. Uh, how many species of echidna are there, living ones, that is? That's question 21. 22, what do you call a baby echidna? <laughs> Whatever you like. No, no, there is a specific name for baby echidnas. What is it? What, what do you call a baby? <laughs> uh, question 23. How many pairs of chromosomes does a platypus have? It's all very monotreme oriented, these, these questions today. They're normally just from the platypus, not about the platypus. But here we go. How many pairs of chromosomes does a platypus have? I'll give you a clue, it's an even number, an even number of pairs. First digit's a two. Ah. And question 24, a platypus fossil was found in which region of South America, starting with the letter P? That's the region in South America, starts with the letter P, and a platypus fossil has been found there. I reckon you can guess that one. Oh, oh no, because there's... Eh. Have a guess anyway. Okay, that's question four, and that's the end of the platypus round. Back to me. Oh, no, oh, look, that we'll come to that. I accidentally had all them turned on. Ooh. <laughs> okay, round eight, geography. Five questions about geography. Oh, I hope you weren't paying attention to the screen. Anyway, question 25, uh, which is further north? Ottawa, the capital of Canada, or London, the capital of Englander? Which is further north, Ottawa or London? The answer may surprise you. Um, what am I drinking? Same as last week. Um, this is this lot uh, who have been making uh, Hochstetter's Rock and Rye. They've been making it since the 1850s. It's basically rye whiskey with rock candy and orange thing. It's, it's essentially... A, <laughs> it's an 1850s... Um, uh, old-fashioned premix. So if the old-fashioned is uh, one of my favourite little cocktails, and indeed one of the oldest there is. Um, uh, and this is... It's, it's about $58 a bottle at um, Dan Murphy's at the moment. 60 at BWS. I'm not quite sure about elsewhere. Anyway, it's quite pleasant. Uh, 20, where are we up to? Question, sorry. Question 25. What's further north, Ottawa or London? Question 26. How many countries have coasts on the Mediterranean Sea? You know the Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean, the middle of the Earth Sea. It's in 
the Shire, or so, not, Tolkien invented it. The middle, of, the middle of the Earth Sea. How many? How many? Um, sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by things. It's terrible business. Uh, how many? How many? How many? How many countries are on the coasts or have coasts on the Mediterranean? <laughs> and for a point each, name them. No, 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 no. Let's not do that. Have a bit of a think about that. Also have a little think about uh, one of the most active volcanoes in the world, Mount Nyiragongo. Mount Nyiragongo. Yes, it's currently erupting quite seriously. Which country is it in? Mount Nyiragongo. N-Y-I-R-A-G-O-N-G-O. Nyiragongo. Where is that volcano? What country? That's for a point. The River Ganges, etc. It's a very complicated river system. Uh, where does it flow into the ocean? Yes, the Indian Ocean, but what is it called? Where that happens? The, it's a bay. There we are. There's a clue. It's a bay. Which bay does the River Ganges flow into? It's quite a big bay. <laughs> and I cannot lie. No, that's a song. Question 29. I know. Oh, please pause so you can count in your head. Question 29 coming up. I know this is a bit harder because in a pub you'd be drinking and uh, you know, there'd be music playing and you could chat and work it out. But question 29 is the infamous map question. And here's the map. I thought we'd go back and visit the stands again. Give you another go at that, okay? So on the map, and I'll run through the rules for the map question. As you can see, I've numbered nine countries there. And now I'm gonna read out five names, five names of countries. Uh, and you just tell me which, which numbers coincide uh, with these country names. Now, this is, this is um, generated totally at random. Um, so uh, my apologies if you find this either too, too easy or too hard in different orders. So A, I'll, I'll, I'll letter them and then you can just do them. So A is Kyrgyzstan. Which number is Kyrgyzstan? There's a point each for these. B is Uzbekistan. C is Turkmenistan. And, and to give you a bit of a breather, D is Mongolia. And E is Russia. I, I know this is... <laughs> I should have put it the other way around so you could warm up to it a bit, but no, that's, uh, that's where we are. Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan... Mongolia and Russia. I'll leave that on there for a moment, I, I think. John Avocado says, as a Yorkshireman, he refuses to believe that London is further north than anywhere. I, I mean, that, that's sort of true. Miss Cat says, possible won't let you donate. Is that because I've already donated? No, you can, you can pledge twice. Um, that's weird. That is quite weird. Um, I hope they're not having another dummy spit because they did have a problem recently when um, when th their, their payment system just broke. So that was um, that was really quite disappointing. Anyway, we'll we'll put the tip. Um, address up in a minute. You can go there. So, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Mongolia, and Russia. Uh, the possible's up to 83% of target three now, which is fabulous. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll also continue there. Uh... Uh, 
No, the, I, no the, the London thing is not a thing. There are places north of London. Lots such as Reykjavik. Okay. Question 30 kicks off the World Affairs round. Five questions about things happening in the world broadly currently. Question 30 is simple. Where's that? Where is that? The country is uh, what will get you the point. If you know the city, I'll give you an extra point. Um, but... Uh, That's there. Hello, Henry Singleton. If you're joining to uh, uh, to play the quiz, please no um, no answers in the chat. You're writing them down, and we're scoring them later. Uh, but we're up to question thirty. Uh, <laughs> John Avocado saying <laughs> said there wasn't going to be a hull around. No, that is not that is not hull. Uh, but it is somewhere in the world. That photograph was taken, I believe, in the last 48 hours um, by that chap. So where is that? You, uh, just uh, Even just naming the country will get you the point, but I'll give you an extra point if you uh, know the city. Uh, question 31. Uh, which European country has banned cryptocurrency? Uh, my, or at least the mining of same, uh, in a bid to help stop power blackouts. News this week, a European country has banned cryptocurrency mining and has actually uh, got its state security apparatus um, uh, tasked with finding cryptocurrency miners that keep going and shutting them down. Which is this wonderfully sensible country? It's in Europe. It's a European country. I don't know whether it's in the EU. No, I don't. That's not a clue one way or the other. I don't know. That's question 31. Question 32. A Bitcoin was invented allegedly by a person with probably a pseudonym, a mathematician. whose name is probably a pseudonym. We don't know who it is. So what is that? that name of the person who is, is alleged to have um, uh, invented Bitcoin. It's certainly the name on the, uh, the academic paper outlining how it would work. And for a second point, there's an Australian chap who reckons he's it. He's the guy who invented Bitcoin. What is the name of that Australian guy who reckons he invented Bitcoin? Thanks, Mick. Yes, that photo, I, I did think it was more recent than 48 hours. I was just giving myself a, a thing. Last night, Australian time, that, that burnt out car and the burning building. Bitcoin, question 32, invented by who and who's the Australian person who reckons uh, uh, he's that person? Question 33, generally speaking... How fast do you have to go before you are hypersonic? How fast do you have to go before it counts as being hypersonic? That's in the news this week because uh, North Korea claims that the thing it launched the other day it was a hypersonic missile and is claiming a certain amount of accuracy, blah, 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 as, as they do. As, as they do. But to be hypersonic, how fast do you have to be going? I mean, the generally accepted kind of thing. It, it actually is. It's a fuzzy. You, 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 you know. If you know, you know. Question 34. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put a picture question up. Question 34. <laughs> oh, Mick Hong, really? Uh I was, I, I was almost offered a job by him once. Anyway, um, question 34. It's, it's the photo question in this round. Uh, who are these people? Now, I put supplied down as the credits for some of those photos uh, because in each case, uh, they are an official photograph 
uh, which if I said exactly how that should be credited, it would, it would give the game away really quite severely. Uh, so who's that? Who, or who are them? All in the news this week. <laughs> to be fair, they're all, they're all in the news most weeks if you're paying attention to the news. I will leave that on screen as I go into the next round, which is the penultimate round, before we get to the final five-point finale question. Yes, five points this time. Um, <laughs> that first guy, yeah, I, I know, I, I know. Uh, question 35, in what year was Scott Morrison born, Australia's Prime Minister for the time being? What year was he born? That is your question 35. I've had enough of those people on screen, haven't you? Uh, question 36. Where would you find all of these things? A frog, a toe, a heel, a wing rail, and the hell block. A frog, a toe, a heel, a wing rail, and the hell block. All of those things would be found where? Where would you find those things? Question 37. Oh, yeah. In which Australian state would you find the Menindi Lakes? Menindi. Menindi Lakes. M-E-N-I-N-D-E-E, in which Australian state would you find them? The Menindi Lakes. I mean, Bren, yes, I'm assuming Scott Morrison was born and not hatched. I was... I, I was... I, I was not going to make that gag, but here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, question 37 was, in which Australian state would you find the Menindi Lakes? Question 38, I, I only found this out the other day. Which famous children's author loves or loved playing tennis in the nude? Famous children's author plays tennis in the nude or played tennis in the nude. I'm, I'm covering people who may or may not uh, still be alive. Well, they may have changed their habits, but they uh, love playing tennis in the nude. Famous children's author. If you're a bit older, you might know this person a little better than if you're a bit younger. But they're still pretty famous. And their style has been... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? parodied uh, quite a bit. Okay, that's question 38. Which children's author just let it all out for a quick game of tennis? Question 39. I reckon this is easy. What city is that? ha, <laughs> What city is that in the photograph? I reckon that's easy. Actually, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know that I necessarily would have picked that from that photo. There you go. What city is that? 39. And finally... Question 40 is the five-point finale. Five points for this question. I'm going to give you the name of something or someone or a place or whatever and give you three alternatives. You have to tell me what it is, where it is or whatever. So where would you find A or the Shirikodama? Shirikodama is the word. Is it A, you would find it in an aquarium, uh, the Shirikodama is a species of uh, cichlid, 
or cichlid rather, a fish from the family cichlidae. Uh, it's closer uh, to the better known angelfish, but harder to breed apparently. So you would find it in an aquarium. Or B, would you find this shirikadama up your ass? Um, it's the mythical ball said to contain your soul and it's located inside your anus. Or is it C, in Kyoto, uh, the Shirakadama is the formal garden in front of Nijo Castle. Uh, that castle was built in 1603. It's made of cypress wood uh, and has extensive gardens. It was a home uh, for the shogun Ieyasu. Uh, and uh, anyway, the Shirakadama is the formal garden in front of Nijo Castle. So would you find the Shirakadama in A, an aquarium, B, up your ass, or C, Kyoto? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is question 40. Let's roll back. Let's roll back. I'll just um, bring up that total there on the uh, possible two. Um, uh, 3930, while you're going back, well, 930 equals. So 85% of target three, I think. I'll work out what that means once I finish this quiz and get back on, on the Twitters. So let's roll back. Let's roll back the platypus round. Okay, are you ready? Question 21, how many species of echidna are alive? There are four species of echidna. In one genus, there is the western long-beaked echidna, the eastern long-beaked echidna, Sir David's long-beaked echidna, named in honour of Sir David Attenborough. And then in another genus, you have the short-beaked echidna. There you go. Question, so four is the answer. Question 22, a baby echidna is called a puggle. A puggle. Uh, question 23, um, uh, platypus have 26 pairs of chromosomes, which I think is the same as you and me. The same as me, anyway. And question 24, where was a platypus fossil found in South America? The answer is Patagonia. Patagonia um, for the point. Uh, thanks, K8. We're into the answers now, so no repeating of the questions required at this stage. Uh, question, okay, that was the platypus round. Question 25, geography, which is further north? The answer is London by quite a bit. London is 51 and a half degrees north. Uh, Ottawa is 45 and a half degrees north to kind of the nearest half a degree. Quite a bit of difference. London is your point there. Question 26, how many countries have coasts on the Mediterranean? The answer is 23. 23. Italy, Greece, Libya, Spain, Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, Cyprus, France, Turkey, Croatia, Malta, Israel, Lebanon, Morocco, Albania, Syria, Montenegro, Palestine, Monaco, Slovenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and the United Kingdom because of Gibraltar making up number 23. There's something to remember for your pub trivia quizzes too. 23 gets you to the point. Question 27, Mount Nyiragongo, Nyiragongo, I got that right the first time, is in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DR Congo. The River Ganges flows into the Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal gets you the point for 29. Uh, for 28, rather. And question 29 is the map question. Here we go. The numbers you wanted to write down were 6, 4, 5, 3, 1. Kyrgyzstan is 6. Uzbekistan is 4. Turkmenistan is 5. Mongolia is 3, of course. And Russia is 1, obviously. Uh, so uh, they were the numbers you wanted. 6, 4, 5, three and one, one point each. Uh, running around the map, one is Russia, as I said, two is Kazakhstan, three is Mongolia, four is Uzbekistan, five is Turkmenistan, six is Kyrgyzstan, seven is Tajikistan, eight is Afghanistan, and nine is, of course, Pakistan.
that's 29. 30, that photograph was taken in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan for the point. Uh, in the city of Al Almaty, 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 which is the um, a largest city in Kazakhstan. I don't think it's the capital, uh, but it's certainly the largest city. Uh, so a point for Kazakhstan. Uh, question 31. Uh, which European country has banned cryptocurrency mining? Kosovo is the answer for the point. Uh, last month, uh, their largest coal-fired power station uh, was shut down because of a technical problem. Uh, that's forced the government to imp import electricity at high prices uh, and, and they can't afford it, basically. So there's been blackouts. So they're trying to cut uh, power consumption by shutting down the crypto miners. So Kosovo is the answer for 31. Uh, 32, Bitcoin was supposedly invented by Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, point for that. I'll give you a point for Satoshi since people just refer to him as Satoshi. Uh, but Satoshi Nakamoto for the point. And for the other point, the Australian who, who reckons he is Satoshi is Craig Wright. I think we need both his, both his names there, Craig Wright. Uh, he was involved in cybersecurity, uh, which is one of his companies. Um, um, did offer me a job at one point. Um, sorry, something non-alcoholic to just... Oh! Whoa! Note to self, get a different glass. Um, that, uh, so yeah, he's a strange... He's, he's, he's a strange chap, is Craig, right? Uh, yes. Uh, question 33... To be hypersonic, you have to be going five times the speed of sound. Five times the speed of sound is the, the magic number. Now, in fact, hypersonic describes certain aerodynamic conditions that start happening roughly when you start going five or more times the speed of sound. There's a whole more technical definition of it, but between five and ten times the speed of sound depending on your altitude and pressure and shit and your shape whatever that's that's where it comes that's where it comes in so five times the speed of sound uh 34 the picture question they are left to right keir starmer uh the labor leader in the united kingdom the leader of the opposition there in the middle that is narendi modi the prime minister of india uh, a very, very um, <laughs> schmicked up official portrait there. So yes, they are uh, official portraits from uh, the Labor Party or possibly the British Parliament, I think, uh, and uh, the Government of India respectively. And on the right, uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Singapore, Lee Hsien Lung. Lee Hsien Lung. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you half points if you didn't know their names but knew their jobs. So Labor leader. PM of India, PM of Singapore, but Keir Starmer, Narendra Modi, uh, Narendra Modi and Lee Hsien Lung uh, for uh, the full points. Uh, question 35, Scott Morrison was born in 1968. 1968 for the point there. Uh, question 36, where would you find a frog, a toe, a heel, a wing rail and the hell block? Uh, at a railway junction. Uh, these are components of what are called points or Americans call a switch, the thing which switches a train from one track to the other. Uh, these are all various components. If you have a look up, uh, I couldn't be asked getting a diagram, but they're all there. There's also uh, running rails and rail up. All the bits have got a name. Uh, so railway junction will do. Question 37, uh, you would find the Menindee Lakes in New South Wales. They're a string of uh, shallow lakes along, uh, well, essentially along the Darling River. And they have been in the news just recently because they've been filling up with all of the, uh, the rain floods in uh, the west of New South Wales. So New South Wales gets you the point for 37. Question 38, the answer is Enid Blyton, famous children's author. Uh, according to uh, Wikipedia, her love of tennis included playing naked with nude tennis, quote, a common practice in those days among the more louche members of the middle classes. Nude tennis. Nude. Oh, that's a 
things there. Uh, Enid Blyton, of course, has uh, fallen out of favour somewhat, uh, given that when you look back at her stories, they're in incredibly racist and xenophobic and, and sexist. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, one of her books, The Little Black Doll, uh, Sambo the Black Doll of the title is hated by his owner and the other toys owing to his ugly black face and he runs away. A shower of magic rain washes his face clean and after that he's acceptable. Uh, and uh, well, there was a wonderful line that I, I wanted to read here. Ah, yes, uh, Phyllis Hartnell, who's an author and books editor, uh, who said that there is a faint but unattractive touch of old-fashioned xenophobia in the author's attitude to the thieves. They are foreign, which is sufficient reason to explain their criminality. Uh, and uh, George Greenfield noticed that Enid was very much part of that between-the-wars middle class which believed that foreigners were untrustworthy or funny or both. So Enid Blyton uh, playing tennis in the nutty. There you go. Question 39, which city? That is Darwin. And I said in there, I'll tell you when, I'll tell you the answer of the photos from the Northern Territory News. Not Port Douglas. Sorry, Mick Fong. But definitely Darwin. I think the giveaway is that right in the middle there somewhere, I think you can make out the government building. Anyway, um, Darwin for the point. And the final round, the answer you wanted is B, up your ass. A shurikadama is indeed uh, the mythical ball said to contain your soul, which lives inside your anus. Uh, and uh, if you're not careful, it will be stolen by Kappa, who are the Japanese river sprites. Um, and uh, if you'd like to see a picture of one, well, a Kappa, here is a, a wonderful image uh, by the uh, Japanese uh, printmaker Sukioka Yoshitoshi. Uh, this is from 1881. Uh, this, this is, uh, well, I don't know whether this is the title of it, but is Repelling Kappa with a Fart. So here you see the Kappa, the river sprites, uh, wanting to uh, attack the fisher folk uh, there. Uh, but uh, the, the fisher folk uh, are armed with farts, which, as you can see, repel uh, the kappa uh, quite, quite nicely. Um, the other thing about kappa is they're sort of, they're sort of tortoise-like, but they're not. You see on their head, they've got their, their hair, but they've got a little um, um, bowl of water as part of their skull. And, and if you can cause them to spill that, that, that will kill them. Uh, uh, you can also distract them with cucumber. Uh, their their favourite food is cucumber. And in fact, um, uh, sushi that has uh, cucumber in the middle is called kapamaki. So um, uh, cucumber um, sushi. Uh, so, so there you have it. Uh, that, is, that, is, that is really quite a lovely thing. So uh, back to the marking. I think there's also allegedly 31 points in the second half, which makes uh, a total of um, uh, 62 possible points officially. Uh, anyone getting any, even anywhere near 30 is doing incredibly well. Anyone getting over 20 uh, is, is, is doing well there. Uh, I will put up the other thing. The possible campaign has finished. Uh, and I know some of you were having trouble making pledges in, in that last hour. Go to there. That's the general address for a tip. Um, that money will go through, uh, and uh, uh, I will add that to the total, uh, everything over the next 24 hours, and I'll keep you in touch uh, via, via the usual methods. So let's have a look at those scores. I'm seeing some impressive scores. I'm seeing 29 from Ross Nye and me and mine, 26 from Mick Fong, which is pretty good. 30 out of 62 for Jim Campbell. That is amazing. 29 from Peter McCrudden. 26 from Jono. Oh, that is, that is, what's, what's the biggest one there? 30 from Jim Campbell, I think, is the highest score, isn't it? Am I seeing that? That is amazing. Yes, Chrissy M, the, if, you, if, if the Fisher folk had jars with them, they could create anti-Kappa fart bombs. 
no, yep, nine. Okay, look, that's pretty good. There's some of you up there, 25 from Oberon's Ghost. Look, that's fabulous. I think Jim Campbell has, has roared through with 30 out of 62, though. That is that is fabulous. Um, I will leave that on that on the screen for a moment. Look, most of my fingers look very big, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. Whoa. <sighs> that. Uh, uh, general viewer is is indeed the APM quiz of everything 2022. I'm not quite sure um, how I'll do the quizzes through this year. If indeed I I will do more, um, I'll see how I go. Um, I mean they're fun to do. Uh, they take essentially a whole whole day to prep up because I'm not you know using the questions for anything else as well. Uh, I've got to get graphics and things like that. Uh, Chrissy M, I missed your score, or well, you came in late, didn't you? So. I'll look, I'll look at that uh, from later up. Uh, thank you, everyone, playing. Thank you, Cheese Trumpet. Hope, glad you enjoyed it. Uh, well done, Jim Campbell, as I say. Well done to everyone who got up in the 20s. That was, that was fabulous work. Um, sorry to fool you about the Dutch history thing. I think Ross and I went off and looked at, read the Wikipedia article on the Netherlands. and like, no, 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 no. Yeah, don't pay too much attention to what I, I say on, on Twitter. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure when, I, when I'll play next. Uh, but until then, um, you know, send me money, do all of those things. Uh, anyway, uh, until then, I'm still Gary and wash your hands. The 8pm quiz is a Skank Media production. Sorry.